so folks, my goodness, guys, it is a humiliating start to the week for old Donnie because of the embarrassing weekend he just had. So embarrassing that a substantial amount of people that have been backing him thus far are running for the exits at a renewed world record speed because of how bad things are going. Just as an example, and we're going to get into a lot of these, you have a top Trump advisors and what have you saying that, you know, now we, we have to back somebody else regardless of what the primary polls say this man is an embarrassment he's a monster he's a liability and it's based on a couple things one it's based on the continued fallout from that disaster cnn event right that regardless of the fact that the room seemed to applaud even though as we now know they were not allowed to boo they were basically forced to act like MAGA freaks, even if they weren't. Just a disaster by CNN to set up that pro-Trump propaganda. But more than that, guys, it's also connected to the fact that he his failed rally in Iowa which again, he was blaming on the weather, is being brutally mocked by Republicans that aren't in the MAGA camp saying it was because of cowardice. Remember, I covered the fact that, yes, there were some warnings, but people on the ground said the weather was actually fine. Listen to this. It explains how devastating this is for Trump, and there'll be more examples of people leaving him. All right, speaking of Washington, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis seized an opportunity in Iowa over the weekend after former President Trump canceled a rally there because of weather. We're going to give you the latest on when the Florida governor could be making his already seemingly official announcement actually official. Florida Governor crisscrossed the state, making a last minute stop in Des Moines. <laughs> That was a 15-minute stop that DeSantis made at Jethro's Barbecue, capitalizing on former President Trump's absence. After Trump was supposed to hold an outdoor rally just a few blocks away on Saturday, but his campaign canceled it due to a tornado watch in the area. Something that DeSantis' allies trolled him about, one of them tweeting, it was a beautiful evening in Iowa. CNN Steve Contorno is covering the Florida governor and joins us now. Uh, obviously, DeSantis is trying to draw a contrast with Trump, made this stop that, you know, I believe was pretty abruptly scheduled after it was clear that the former president had canceled his rally. Right, Steve? That's exactly right, Kate. And the, and the key uh, th distinction here is that he's appeared to go after Trump in this, but he has so far avoided overt and direct attacks on the former president. You know, he likes to set up these contrasts where he shows, you know, his administration versus Trump's. He talks about how he, he, there are very few leaks in his administration. There's no drama. That is obviously a comparison to a lot of the chaos that engulfed the Trump administration. He likes to talk about how he would finish the border wall, which obviously talks to suggest that Trump didn't finish it, something that you brought up in the town hall with him last week. Uh, and listen to this warning he issued to Iowa voters on Saturday when he talked about the stakes in 2024. If we make 2024 election a referendum on Joe Biden and his failures, and if we provide a positive alternative for the future of this country, Republicans will win across the board. If we do not do that, uh, if we get distracted, if we focus the election on the past or on other side issues, then I think the Democrats are gonna beat us again. Uh, and I think it'll be very difficult to recover uh, from that defeat. You'll notice he did not mention President Trump there, but it was very obvious who he was talking about. And this is something we're seeing from Republicans across the board. There's a bit of a tentativeness to going directly at Trump. And that is something that we are seeing as well from Governor DeSantis while he remains not yet a presidential candidate. Caitlin. Yeah, it'll be it'll be notable to see how does DeSantis handle what Trump was doing last week, you know, still denying the results of the last election. And so I think one question here is, as we've seen DeSantis in Iowa, in Iowa, we know, of course, exactly what he's doing there. The question still is, when is he actually going to officially enter this race now that the Florida legislature has wrapped up their work? What's your sense on when that timing could happen? Kayla, my sources are telling me there's one big box left for him to check, and that is to finish 
uh, going through the state budget. He likes to go through line by line and cut spending where he can. And once he puts that behind him, then we are going to see the clock down, the countdown really start. My sources suggest late May, first week in June is a, is a likely time frame. But I have to tell you, just seeing him this past weekend in Iowa and traveling with him in, in Sioux Center, there were DeSantis 2024 signs. There was a bus there for, by a super PAC that says DeSantis for president. So he's not a candidate yet, but all the signs are there. Yeah, well, we'll be watching closely when those signs are official. Steve Contorno, thank you. We focus the election on the past or on other side issues. Then I think the Democrats are going to beat us again. Welcome back to State of the Union. That was Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in Iowa yesterday making his pitch to 2024 Republican primary voters. My panel joins me now. Nice to see everybody. Uh, Scott Jennings, he not only was out in Iowa, he also, Ron DeSantis, seems to be reacting to and um, changing a bit as it as it goes with his critics saying he's not engaging enough he's not glad handing he's not looking people the eye, in the eye the way that Iowa voters New Hampshire voters have an expectation of their candidates yeah uh, and he did a great job with that yesterday in Iowa rolled out a bunch of endorsements had a good day Donald Trump canceled his event some people say it was because of the weather other people say it was because he I wasn't able to draw a big crowd. I don't know what the truth is, but there's some evidence for that theory. I thought DeSantis uh, had a nice run. By the way, he's not even a candidate yet. But to me, the most important thing he did was make an argument about what is the purpose of a political party. The purpose of a party is to beat the Democrats, the Republican Party in this case. And we don't, Trump doesn't have a plan to beat the Democrats. He has a plan to dominate the Republican Party. DeSantis wants the party to be an electoral function and Trump wants the party to be a bludgeoning tool against the people that Republicans hate, whether that's CNN or the media or whoever, what other institutions. DeSantis wants it to win elections, and I thought that was the best message he could have had yesterday. Lisa, I think Trump world would have had you believe that the town hall this past week was a huge victory and a win for them. But I think the reality is a lot of Republican observers were watching and saying that man didn't win a single additional vote. And I think it emboldened challengers like Ron DeSantis, who of course isn't announced yet um, to go out and make a different case. Remind them you don't want the drama, you don't want the noise, you don't want your blood pressure growing up. It was a good day for him. My one critique of DeSantis at this juncture would be you have two jobs in a primary. Raise your name ID and take out the competition. And there is someone who's pulling in double digits ahead of him and he's not directly going after Trump enough. His pack is, to be honest, the never back down pack is a really good candidate itself right now. Mm. But DeSantis has kind of waffled on actually challenging Trump which is something he's going to yeah, have I wonder, to do. Yeah, I wonder if he will change that when he actually does run. I want to get you yeah. in, but I want to first, you mentioned the CNN town hall and the fact that part of the strategy there was to get Donald Trump to expand beyond his base. The content of what he said uh, might have posed some challenges. Let's listen to some of that. Will you pardon the January 6 rioters who were convicted of federal offenses? I am inclined to uh, pardon many of them. Getting rid of uh, Roe v. Wade was an incredible thing, and I was very honored to do it. Do Looking you want over, Ukraine to win this war? Uh, I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people. Michael LaRosa, first of all, welcome to the State of the Union Thank panel. You. Uh, you worked for the Bidens for, for a while. You worked in the Biden administration. What's your view of how Democrats can or will use comments like this? Well, I think he just provided a lot of material, but that material is already there anyway. I don't think he, I don't think he added much. I think you saw a preview, thanks to CNN, a preview to what the uh, next campaign is gonna look like um, from the candidates, but also from, from the audience at home. This is what we're gonna be watching for the next year and a half again. Um, I think that when it comes to Trump, I, look, of course, the Biden campaign would love to run against Donald Trump because we know th we know there's hard data on Trump, right? We know that independents have now run away from him three times, three elections in a row. And that's something that you feel safe with. Like, you know what you're running against. With anybody else, that's, it, it, it's, it's going to be a challenge for um, President Biden because it, nothing you fear more in politics is an X factor. So you can see, none of these people are good. Like, again, I cannot stress this enough. I 
I really, I don't, I don't know if I care who wins the GOP primary. Yeah, like hypothetically, if you could manifest like a reasonable red state governor to like run and and maybe become the nominee, then then fine, I guess it would be better. But they're all gonna be awful, so I really don't care who wins, honestly. Um, but the point is, I like to see them at each other's throats. I like to see them tear one another apart, to weaken each other, to expose each other's flaws, so that by the time the general comes along, whether it's Trump, which it looks likely, or whether it's anybody else, it is getting bad. But it really says something, that Trump is bleeding staffers and bleeding endorsements in that way from people who know him well, despite the good polling. That's how awful Trump is. It's one thing, and you see this in politics all the time, for people to jump ship when a campaign is starting to lose. Like you see it in the, you saw it in the Democratic primary. When somebody's polls shifted, all of a sudden everyone abandoned them and they looked for the next person that they felt was most similar to them. And it eventually ended up, as it often does, you know, two people at the end. Because everyone else, they lost their support, they dropped out, either endorsed one of the two main candidates. And Trump, it's the opposite. As his poll numbers get better, he continues to lose people. And he continues to sow doubt in the party because of how insane he is. So this humiliating weekend with the rally, but also this humiliating week with the town hall, has shown Republicans that they cannot win with this SOB, but apparently they can't survive without him because the party is so devoted to him like a cult, I don't think they can get away from him. They are truly truly screwed guys and look we've talked about this before one of the republican candidates doesn't have a chance of winning wants to raise the voting age to 25 and the reason republicans want to do that is because they know that the system if it's fair they'll never win again